Oh, hello. Good evening tonight. We are live from my news up at this awake and also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, beaten up 279. And we're all across the world of I'm Tonight, the ambulance trial continues. The Attorney General is denying implicating in being the allegations of coercion. We've got some more details for you of what happened in court today, plus the NDC's reaction and the Attorney General's press statement and some reactions from the Office of the Attorney General. We'll give you details of this shortly on Ghana tonight. And the National Communications Officer of the NDC, Sami Jemfi, joins us tonight. Also, we have the upcoming details and developments and more in the GRA SML deal with the KPMG audit report as released by the President. Some shocking detail will tell you about some non-payment of taxes by SML captured in this report. We're asking questions. Who has to answer questions for this? Importers and exporters are not too happy, we'll tell you. Also, there's imminent fuel shortage. That's according to the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, because of the strike by the tanker, the Fuel Tanker Drivers Association. And there was a meeting, a crucial meeting, regarding this strike of the fuel tanker drivers earlier today. We'll give you an indication of how this meeting ended here. On Ghana Tonight, as always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. Well, let's settle for Ghana Briefs. In what is now the full-blown political tussle between the government and the opposition, the Attorney General has vehemently denied allegations of persuading Richard Jakwa, the third accused in the ambulance trial, to implicate the majority leader, Atto Forsen. The court today was thrown into a frenzy when the third accused in the ongoing trial made damning allegations accusing Godfrey Dami of coercing him into allegedly fabricating evidence against the former Deputy Finance Minister. <music> Director of Special Duties of the Movement for Change, Hobson Adoye, is to report to the Ministry's police station every Monday to assist with investigations as part of 20,000 cities' bail condition. The outspoken politician, who has been charged for publication of fake news, self-confessed on an Accra-based radio station to detonating dynamites in the Volta region during the 2016 elections to scare voters in the stronghold of the National Democratic Congress. They have trained, they have trained us. Now what's it missing BBC everywhere? Trending the movement. So whatever is going on right, right now, we are even happy it happened this week. I am telling you, we are happy. 100% happy. And we thank God he has been built too. Whether he was built or not, we will still be movement. And movement will come to power. Nobody can change the promise of God. The authorities that be or the powers that be want to divert the attention from the Senate deal and uh, SML, KPMG issue so that the Ghanaians will not be thinking about that one and be commenting on it. Former National Chairman of the NDC Samuel Ofusuampofo is reposing confidence in the flag bearer of the NDC to rescue the country from the current economic mess. Speaking to journalists shortly after arriving from London, where he underwent multiple surgeries for over a year, the ex-NDC chairman says the current national officers of the party have exhibited a true commitment to transforming the country under an NDC administration. I have been in touch with the leadership of the party and I think that they are doing very well. I also want to commend the flag bearer His Excellency, John Bermani Mahama, the next president of Ghana, obviously, for the human job that he do. I know his commitment, his love, and his passion and desire to help bring this country out of the current doldrum that we find ourselves.
The KPMG audit report into the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, and the Strategic Mobilization Ghana Limited, SML contract, has revealed a bulk payment to SML covering invoices for an eight-month period, did not have value-added tax VAT, and withholding tax, WHT deductions. According to the KPMG audit, the amount involved total 13.38 million CDs, spanning the period from September 1, 2020 to April 30, 2021. The First Lady, Rebecca Ikufuado, has emphasized the need for interventions addressing system gaps that contribute to the persistent occurrence of fistula in Ghana. At an event in Accra, she advocates for a holistic approach to address the country's fistula-related impacts. Pregnancy and childbirth should be a positive experience for women, ensuring women and their babies reach their full potential for health and well-being. It is important that we address the barriers to health care that are people, especially mothers, who make the ultimate sacrifice of producing the next generation phase. We need to address challenges related to gender equity in health decision making, harmful cultural practices and beliefs preventing health seeking behavior. The goal for oil policies, effectiveness and relevance are being questioned due to the challenges like a weakening CD and rising fuel costs. Well, this morning is on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, there's a twist in the financial loss to the state case involving the minority leader, Dr. Kessel Atuforsing, and also the third accused person, Richard Jakba. Today, in an explosive fashion in court, it's accusing the Attorney General of seeking to have him help him to make a case against the first accused, Dr. Kessel Atuforsing, who is the minority leader and a former Deputy Finance Minister. This has obviously left a sore taste in the mouth of the NDC, and they are having to come to all these issues, gun blazing against the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General. The Attorney General has responded earlier today. We'll give you the details of that response from the Attorney General shortly. But my colleague, Lord Eduasari, who's a court correspondent, was in court. He sat through the entire process in court. It gives us a fair idea of the emotions at play, the facial expressions, and the reactions after Richard Jakpa made this statement earlier today in court. Take a look. During the trial, businessman Richard Jakpa, who was being cross-examined by Godwin Edujitamaklu, counsel for Keso Atsoforsen, was cautioned by Justice Ifya Sewa Asaribuchi to be direct in his responses rather than going around it and wasting the court's time. The third accused was responding to questions on who was behind approval of letters of credit for the purchase of the ambulances. Attorney General Godfrey Yebo Adame, reacting to the judge's caution, accused Richard Jakpa of defending Dr. Keso Atuforsen. This triggered the third accused who retorted that the Attorney General appeared pained because he had engaged him to help the state make a case against Dr. Keso Atuforsen. Richard Jakpa alleged that he had been approached by the AG and had had all our meetings with him on implicating the former deputy minister, but he refused. The minority leader who was present in court was taken aback and looked upset by the development. Justice Ifya Sewa Asaribotri then stood down the case and called all representing lawyers as well as the attorney general into her chambers for a meeting. After about 30 minutes, the case was recalled, after which she indicated that at the next hearing, a seal of proceedings motion filed by counsel for Atu Forsen will be heard. The case has been adjourned to May 28 for further cross-examination of Richard Jakpa. Dr. Keso Atu Forsen, together with Dr. Sylvester Animana and Richard Jakpa, are on trial for causing financial loss of 2.37 million euros to the state through a contract to purchase 200 ambulances for the Ministry of Health. The state has, however, discontinued the case against Dr. Sylvester Animana. Lord Edouard TV3 News, 
Akwa. After the statement, in fact, the Attorney General had to respond with another statement explaining what, what had happened. And we'll hear from the NDC shortly because the NDC issued a statement signed by its national chairman, Johnson Isidun Ketia, describing this as, as quite troubling to say the least. That is indeed the case that now some details and all what they have suspected over the period is what is playing out now. The, the Attorney General had this to say in the statement, and we have portions of that statement we're going to put on the screen right now. This is what the Attorney General is saying. He says that he, he has not engaged the third accused, that's Richard Jakwa, to give false testimony in the matter of the case ongoing. Also, the Attorney General has also come under enormous pressure from all manner of persons for him to discontinue the prosecution of Kesala Tufosin, who's a minority leader and a deputy finance minister, but has not yielded. Now, the Attorney General also has a video evidence of the first accused person, that's Dr. Kesala Tufosin, the minority leader, coming to him and to plead with him to discontinue the prosecution. This the Attorney General has refused to do. This is what the AG is saying. Now, the latest allegation leveled against the Attorney General, according to this statement, he says it's part of a grand scheme by the NDC to put more pressure on him as the Attorney General to discontinue the prosecution or to divert attention from the real issues. That's what the Attorney General is saying and, and making the point that Indeed, he has a video evidence of the, of the first accused person, Dr. Kessler Tufosin, coming to him and to plead with him to discontinue this case, the prosecution of this case involving the purchase of some ambulances. Now, this is what Richard Jakpa said in court specifically. We have a direct quote from Richard Jakpa. That, as was reported by my colleague, Lord Edward Sari, who is a court correspondent. Exactly what did he say, what has generated all of this. Now, what we reported earlier today is this. Richard Jakpa says, and I quote, I don't, and he was responding to a statement that was made by the Attorney General in court today that he appears to be defending Dr. Keselato Forcing. That statement in court infuriated him, and according to a court correspondent, this was his response. Quote, I don't understand why the Attorney General will accuse me of defending the first accused, Dr. Kessler to force him, when I'm here to defend myself. If he pushes me, I will open the Pandora's box. I have evidence to all this. He continues that based on this statement, he says he has evidence to everything that he is talking about and that the Attorney General uh, has been engaging him at odd hours. That is part of the statement that is attributed to Rete Jakpa. And this is a statement that he says he stands by and he is going to prove. If he is pushed, he would open the Pandora's box. But who is Rete Jakpa? Let's first of all establish this. Who is he and, and why is this statement instructive, to say the least? This is what we do know so far. Take a look. Richard Jakba is, a, is accused, the third accused in this case, the businessman who facilitated the purchase of what the Attorney General's office refers to as defective ambulances for the Ministry of Health. It is the basis for this trial and what is going on right now. Right. from Sami Jemfi earlier today in court after the, this hearing today and all this that transpired and the statement that was made by Richard Jakba. This is what Sami Jemfi said after the court hearing. But we were shocked to the marrow when the third accused under cross-examination disclosed to the courts that 
the Honorable Attorney General has been reaching out to him, calling him over the phone, and that he has met with him in person, and that the Attorney General has been asking him to give false testimony to the court and skew his testimony in such a way that corroborates the case of the Attorney General against the first accused, so that the first accused can be convicted and jailed. He said this in open court and asked that it should be put on record. And um, her ladyship also directed that same should be captured by the record. And so what we are talking about is something which is on record. And we as a political party are totally scandalized and disgusted by this development. We are not surprised because we've always known that this is a stock in trade of Godfrey Yabu Adame. This is not a man who is interested in justice or the law. This is not a man who is... Well, the man who whom you heard talking there is going to be joining us on Zoom in a bit. But the Attorney General, after this statement by Sami Jemfi, issued the statement that we, we put on the screen right now. And the, the, the spokesperson for the Attorney General, Wilbur Force, Mensa, has also corroborated what is in, contained in this Attorney General statement. That indeed they have a video, they have video evidence of Dr. Kesselato forcing coming to the Attorney General to plead with him to stop the prosecution of this case. He spoke earlier to my colleague, Parker Shasari, on News 360. Take a look. But it's just um, what the Honorable Minister for Justice is being accused. And we'll bring that to you right now. And let me welcome Sami Jemfi, who is uh, the National Communications Officer of the NDC. Uh, Sami Jemfi, can you hear me? Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Um, Alfred, thanks for having me. Great. And I want you to hold on a bit and let's take a listen to the, the spokesperson for the right. Attorney General and Ministry of Justice, specifically making that statement that they have video evidence of the majority the minority leader your party's representative for the you in parliament making the case that look drop this prosecution and and please let, let, let go of this case he says he stands by that claim take a look willing at this time to release this tape for the whole Ghanaian public to know exactly what happened between the AG and the Attorney General, the AG and the Minority if Leader. It becomes, if, it becomes, if it becomes necessary, the Honorable Attorney General would. But as it stands now, it, 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 I mean, I, I honestly do not see the necessity at this point in time. But believe you me, if it becomes necessary, the Honorable Attorney General will not hesitate to release the, the, the footage, which indeed is there. Well, so that's it. Lawyer Sami Jemfi has Dr. Kesela Tofosin as the spokesperson for the Attorney General Ministry of Justice saying, been going to meet the Attorney General. Do you know this and, and for what exactly? I can tell you that this claim by Godfrey Yabu Adame is nothing but a bare lie. These are the words of a desperate man who is drowning because his sins have finally found him out. You see, every drowning man clutch to straws. And that is what Godfrey Yabuadame has been reduced to, a drowning man who is clutching to straws. Now, let's for a minute subject what the Attorney General is saying to a common sense test. There is an Attorney General who is supposed to be a Minister of Justice, who claims that an accused person that he is prosecuting in a criminal matter approached him and sought to compromise him to drop a case against him. Now, this is the man who is supposed to be the leader of the bar. What has he done about that since that alleged incident happened? How come that we have never heard Godfrey Dame talk about this incident, whether in court or in the media? How come he never raised it if such an incident happened? 
Because we are told that Godfrey Dame is a saint. He is a corruption fighter. He doesn't tolerate corrupt people who try to corrupt prosecutors. And so if an accused person sought to compromise him as a prosecutor, what will you expect from him? To come out with the facts, to name and shame, and possibly to even prosecute that accused person. Why is it that Godfrey Dame has waited till today to talk about this? The answer is very simple. What's the the incident he's talking about is a figment of his own imagination. Nothing like that has happened. I want to put on record here that Honorable Atto Forsen Minority Leader in Parliament has never met Godfrey Dame to plead for the case against him, which is already collapsing as a pack of cars like a pack of cars, you know, to be discontinued. Well, well, Atto Forsen has never made that plea to Godfrey Dame. It's a bare lie. Well, he and says that they, they have Dame, video evidence. They have video evidence that if they are My they brother, are pushed, where is the video evidence? They, they are going I'm to release the video him. evidence. I'm daring him. Why must he even threaten? What is he waiting for? We are giving him 24 hours. If he's a man, he has balls. He has a modicum of honor and integrity in him. We are daring him to publish that video tonight. He should not even wait till tomorrow. Why do we take such jokers seriously in this country? You claim that somebody sought to compromise you and you have video evidence, and you've been sitting on that video evidence from God knows when till now, and that it is only when you were exposed in court that you came out to talk about this so-called video evidence you have, and that video evidence, you can't even tell us when you are going to release it, and you expect us to take this man serious. Look, the issue at stake is not about a mere allegation being made by Arthur Forsen or the NDC. Right. We are talking about evidence given in open court under oath. Read my lips. Under oath by a witness in open court. This witness is not a member of the NDC. He is a businessman called Richard Jackpa, the representative of a company called Big C's, a company that was the local representative, I must say, and this was a company that was contracted by the actual NDC Mahama government to supply Ghana with ambulances, a contract which is the subject matter of this criminal trial. Mm -hmm. This Richard Ahyakpa, in open court under oath, whilst he was being cross-examined, in the presence of the attorney general, with a judge presiding in her seat, told everybody in open court that the attorney general has been calling him at all hours. And in fact, he had met the attorney general severally at all hours, at which meetings the attorney general sought to coerce him and impress upon him to falsify his testimony to implicate Honorable Atto Forsen. And that Attorney General promised him that if he does so, he will set him free. My brother, the man didn't make an allegation in a press statement. I want you to understand that. But, but, he, but, made, but, he gave this evidence and the oath in court in the presence of the Attorney well, General. Well, well, and this, is, no, this is why I'm driving at just a second. Okay. And the Attorney General, this is what is material. The Attorney General could not deny the allegation in open court. In, in fact, and that's the point I was going to, that he says that the Republic, in his statement, the Republic has never required or desired the cooperation of any of the accused persons in the matter, in which it has already succeeded in establishing a prima facie case against all the accused persons. Neither the Attorney General nor any officer from the Office of the Attorney General has approached any of the accused persons with a view to obtaining evidence from them. Okay. It, is rather, it is rather the third accused, Richard Jakba, who by various letters dated 27th April 2023, 16th May, 30th May, and 12th June, has proposed to the Republic through the Attorney General to engage in plea bargaining or plea negotiations. Alfred, you have already you have already read the statement. So, Let's so, so, so this is it. So th this is it. My question is my question to you is ask Godfrey Dame. Why didn't he tell the court this in, in the presence of Richard Jackpot? 
when, the, when this evidence was given by Richard Dapper? Why couldn't he say this in court? You see, as for a press release, anybody can issue a press release and say anything. But in court, when you're testifying under oath, and you give any false testimony, like Mr. Richard Jackpa was doing, you'll be liable for the offense of perjury. And Mr. Mr. Richard Jackpa knows of that. He knows that if he makes a false allegation against the Attorney General, he can go to jail for that, because that is an offense called perjury. And yet he made that statement in the presence of the Attorney General. The Attorney General could not respond to this allegation in open court. And after <laughs> this matter has become public knowledge, he now issues a statement to say it is not true, and you want to put premium on that. Even armed robbers, when they are arrested, they deny their crimes. So well, the fact that he's denying it is neither here nor there. This is now part of the record of proceedings before the courts. In fact, the judge directed that that evidence given by Richard Jackpot should form part of the record. Godfrey Dame was there. He could not ask the court to strike that out of the record. So if the allegation was frivolous, if that evidence was frivolous, what any lawyer would do is that, my lady, this is frivolous, it should be struck out. He couldn't. He couldn't. So it is not this post facto defense he has contrived that you should be wasting your time on. I have told you, my brother, let's even examine this excuse is given that, oh, it is Richard Jackpot who has applied to the Attorney General for a plea bargain. Is that not what the, the Attorney General is saying? That is what is in but the he himself point says, three. Okay, yes. He himself says that government has already established a prima facie case against all the accused persons and have never sought their cooperation. In other words, they have refused the plea bargain sought by Richard Jackpot. So if that plea bargain has been refused, then... It means that he had no basis meeting Richard Jackpa. I want you to understand something here. Look, a plea bargain does not prove the guilt of an accused person. That is why if you look at the plea bargain they are talking about, it is written on top of it without prejudice. Let me explain to you what this a plea bargain is about. The company Big C that was contracted by government to supply these ambulances, the subject matter of this court case, is not a party to the court case. Government has not sued them. Government is not prosecuting Big C's as a company. Their government is prosecuting their local Gavian representative, Richard Jackpa. So Big C's write a letter to Richard Jackpa, which letter was forwarded to the Attorney General. Which letter, a plea bargain, is saying one thing, that look, this case is about a contract involving us. It, it has the risk of damaging our reputation. However, we are not a party to the case as a company, mm -hmm. and therefore we can't defend ourselves. And so as a company, we are worried and concerned about the damage this case can do to our reputation. Without prejudice to our innocence, or the case of the accused persons before the courts, we are offering to settle the matter. You mm -hmm. claim that the contract we are a party to has occasioned a financial loss of 2 million euros to the state. We are offering to pay that to you so that you discontinue the matter. Because we are not a party to it as a company. And we can't defend okay. ourselves. And okay. so this matter can damage our reputation. That is all there is in the letter. What we are talking about here has got nothing to do with this. Look, this letter was not written by Richard Jackpot, but by lawyers of Richard Jackpot. And so if Godfrey Dami wanted to engage the accused person, the third mm -hmm. accused person, on this plea bargain, okay, he would okay. have engaged Richard Jackpot, the third accused, through his lawyer, who signed that letter. But the meetings Richard Jackpot spoke about today are direct mm -hmm. core conversations and physical meetings at clandestine locations, some he, he, under the cover of darkness, he, he, between he, he told him you that. and the Attorney General. Richard Jackpot told you oh, that. Oh, I know that. He didn't say that in court, but I know that. You know and that? And next week, next week, when we hold a press conference addressed by our national chairman, 
we will shock the nation. You will yeah. get to know God for that. What, what Richard Jaffa said today in court a was that he was being, co he was being contacted we uh, uh, at, at all hours. Or at all hours. You say yes, that they were, they were meeting, so. they were meeting so. under he, the cover of darkness? At all hours means what? At all hours means no, what? No, you said you have further evidence. You have further evidence beyond what he said And I am court. telling you, we have indicated in the statement signed by no less a person than our national chairman, that next week, early next week, we are going to hold a full-blown press conference. Mm -hmm. We are going to put out our evidence. We have given you time for our press conference. We're going to put out the evidence. And you will see Godfrey Dame and the corrupt government he represents for who they are. A crooked character being we, 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 we would wait, we, we, we'll wait for, for that. But so this Pandora's box that uh, Richard it is not talks about, about Pandora's box. You, you already know the details you, 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 of it. Okay. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, is, it, is it like you have not read our press statement? We are saying that beyond what the third mm -hmm. accused said in court. Okay. We have, have in our ev custody evidence. incontrovertible and shocking evidence that shows the desperate length that Godfrey Yabuadami went to pervert the course of justice in this matter. The desperate length he has gone just to hang an innocent man for cheap political goal scoring and to satisfy his dirty ego. We will so, put that evidence out and you will see that Liar for who he so, is. So this, this evidence you are putting out, when? The press statement we issued, that press statement you read, it, we told we, you we, early we, next week. I have you. Early next week you. means before Wednesday next week. Because before you said Wednesday. El, el, the, the press conference that happened on Monday to happen on Tuesday. Okay. Yes, it's the likely press conference said early next week. So please, don't okay. reduce this matter to political football. Right. This is not a matter between NDC and NPP. It is... An evidence testimony given by an accused person who was a witness testifying in court under oath against the attorney general in his okay. presence. Right. Which which evidence the attorney general could not dispute. He could not even move for it to be struck out. Whatever he says in the media is completely irrelevant. And we are daring him even on the frivolous case, uh, I mean, allegations he's making in the media. If he wants the media banter, we are ready for him. Okay. So, Godfrey Dame, that if he's a man, he should give TV3 that video evidence he has of Arthur Forsen begging him to drop a case against him. In any okay. case, if he has that evidence, it would even commit a crime. But we are telling you that he doesn't have it. Okay. And if he's a man, he should abuse that evidence. Right, thank you. So I, I, I needed to establish a few things. Sami Jemfi, thank you very much. The press statement that you put out says the press conference that you're going to organize to put out this full detail is going to be early next week. That's why I kept asking you the exact date. You say Tuesday, could be Tuesday. We'll wait for it, all right? And, and we'll get some... Yes. Not go beyond Wednesday. Be, be, beyond Wednesday. Okay, we'll wait for it. Don't go beyond Wednesday. We'll, We'll, yes. We'll and, wait for and, it. And, and thank you. Thank you. We've got to move. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for, for joining us. Sami Jemfi is National Communications Officer of the NDC, joining us on this. They've given an indication of exactly when they are putting out some more details and evidence of what they have pertaining to this case. So on that, we'll follow closely. Coming up next, you're on Ghana tonight. The KPMG audit report into the Ghana Revenue Authority and the strategic mobilization Ghana Limited contract has revealed a bulk payment to SML covering invoices for an eight-month period did not have value-added tax and withholding tax deductions. We'll tell you about it and give you some more details. And look, yesterday, after the over 300-page full KPMG audit into the GRA SML deal was released, we promised you that we're going to do some segmented analysis of the details of it. Here's today's part and what we found out so far. And Mariada is going to be joining us in a bit. He, uh, she is the National Director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative, Local Tactiles Transparency International. We'll give some more details on what they have been looking into as well as a civil society organization. And this is it. If you're looking to um, the page 28, 27, and then also the page 30 of this document, 
you'll see what we're going to put out there. And you know, we've published the full details of it on 3news.com. Take a look. First point of the issues relating to the findings as made by KPMG. They say that, in effect, there are issues related to, one, the GRA Act, Section 5A, provides that the board shall ensure the proper and effective performance of the functions of the authority and includes the supervision and monitoring of the authority in the performance of its functions. It continues that the functions of the authority under Section 3A and 3D include assessing and collecting taxes and combating tax fraud and evasion. In fact, if you look at what they say next, that it is very, very instructive that amongst other matters, the government of Ghana's long-term interests are served and ensures critical review of all proposals and other services. On the basis of the above, it is expected that the management of GRA would inform and seek the board's approval for key activities, including contracts with significant financial commitments. There is no evidence that the contracts GRA signed with SML in 2018 and 2019 were submitted to the board for deliberation and approval. The projects underlying the contract signed in 2023, on the other hand, were submitted to the board for approval. GRA clarify that in this context, the principal spending officer holds the responsibility for approving the contracts. Mariada is joining us on Zoom for a quick conversation on this. I appreciate your time, Mary, for joining us here on, on Ghana tonight. There are a number of issues in there that uh, beyond this document being published, we see portions of the, of the document which we're going to put on the screen as we go on, on the basis that borders on illegality and also the breach of the public procurement procedures as well. Now, if the presidency fails to take appropriate action, what would you, the civil society organizations and the coalition, be pressing for? Alfred, I, I believe that uh, civil society's role is to continue to in, ensure that we interrogate and bring up the issues. And so, as you have rightly said, one of the things we are currently doing is to interrogate the reports look at the various issues that are upcoming and then we see what other actions we are going to be taking so as the uh, citizens coalition we are doing a lot of different things and we would uh, come out with our next steps including if there is a need to go beyond just um, talking. We mentioned yesterday we could do all the other things we have done in the past, including demonstrations, including exploring the possibility of going to court, and then also refer referring to some of the investigative bodies or even uh, either Shraj or the SP2 further take action on this. So there are many more opportunities for us to do this. And you know, we have all the experts and all the people within the coalition who would support this cause. We, we are all working to ensure that we have uh, the procurement law respected. And we've realized that contrary or uh, the white paper the president issued uh, even though it's a lot of the things that happened, but there have been some inconsistencies that are currently being raised, but that's not the substantive issue. The substantive issue is that if there have been breaches, then people should be held to account. And those who are supposed to be held to account, we in civil society and you in the media would have to sustain this discourse to ensure that the presidency, our executive president, mm -hmm. who has the power to ensure that the writing is done, mm. does so. I see. And there's one bit that we just put on the screen right now. Let's put that back on. Um, the six service contracts, according to this KPMG report, uh, the audit report, which we have details of, 
the GRA entered into six service ag agreements with SML utilizing the single source method without obtaining approval from the Public Procurement Authority, as outlined below. Transaction Audit Service, June 1, 2018. This was entered into without the PPA approval. Contract Extension, January 1, 2019, without PPA approval. External Price Verification Services, April 1, 2019, without PPA approval. And then the next three. Consolidation Service Agreement, that's Transaction Audit and External Verification, January 1, 2019. That was also done without PPA approval. And Measurement of Audit Downstream Petroleum Products, 3rd October 2019. That was done without PPA approval. And the Addendum to Measurement Audit for Downstream Petroleum Products Agreement, 29 July 2020. This agreement was also entered into with between the GRA and SML without the Public Procurement Authority's approval. Already, the majority in Parliament has indicated their support for this deal, regardless of all of these issues that have come up as well, that this is good, it's going to benefit the country. That's the verdict, Mary. Alfred, you realize that even from Parliament, the Energy Committee is also going to interrogate this process. So it's not like it's being uh, let uh, die. And if the majority says there's nothing wrong with the deal, the current issues that are being revealed as to the infractions that were caused by uh, both the GRA and also the fact that it's been uncovered that some of the contractual agreements were not upheld because the SML was actually not doing what it was supposed to be doing. If that is what the representatives of the people in the majority side have said, I'm saying if, mind you, if that is what they have said, that is very unfortunate and I believe well, does not reflect the will of the people, even think, though they have voted them to be there. Well, but, but Mary, that's actually what they said, right? And um, there's video evidence to that effect. There was a press conference that was addressed by the majority leader. Um, indicating the support of the majority for this deal. It's, it, it happened in Parliament, right? So it's on record. Mary. They said that, but we all know, perhaps maybe from the benefit of hindsight, they will come again. Because this report has shown that the people were paid 1.4 billion CDs for which they didn't deserve. Does that mean the majority does not see that? Were these monies paid to them, or are they related to those who are in this company? If that is the case, then they should come clean, let us know. However, if we are all working towards promoting equity, promoting accountability, and ensuring that public policy is respected, and public policy is what it is, that we come to a certain consensus on what exactly the people need, we set the agenda and we ensure that we are promoting the best of transparency, the best of accountability, and ensuring the public good, then those we have put in places of power to execute their mandate must come again. Because uh, perhaps they didn't have the full benefits of the report. Let's give it to them. However, today we know that the over 300-page report shows that some people did not do their work well and some people must answer. And I'm, I'm happy that the Citizens Coalition is not lying on this. We are going to be awake we are going to explore all the avenues at our disposal. And we are also happy that Parliament is going to constitute a committee that would further interrogate these issues. And I believe that there is no way all the avenues that would be explored would come to nothing. And I am very sure that the president would also want to ensure by, by even giving us this report, it shows that the president is meeting us halfway. And so if there is a need to further sanction people for this, I believe that certainly 
the actions that are required to be taken. Because if they have been breached this the course of conduct of public officers who superintended over these, then the, the law must take its course right. and people must answer. Mary, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Mary Ada is Executive Director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative, Local Chapter of Transparency International, will serialize various aspects of this report in our subsequent bulletins here on TV3 and also on 3FM 92.7, 3news.com. You go there, you get the full details of this report and the various aspects as we serialize it every step of the way. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Coming up next, uh, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, they've warned of a looming fuel shortage if the concerns of the striking Ghana National Petroleum Tanker Drivers Union are not urgently resolved. There was a meeting today, crucial meeting earlier today. We'll tell you what the outcome was. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, contends that failure by the relevant authorities to resolve the drivers, that's the fuel tanker drivers' concerns, will result in dire consequences. If you do know now, the members of the Ghana National Petroleum Tanker Drivers Union, they declared an indefinite strike on Tuesday, May 21, demanding improved conditions of service. Now, Executive Secretary for the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Duncan Amoa, says if this strike lasts for 72 hours, petroleum consumers may soon have to queue at the fuel pumps for the product. He's joining us on Zoom. Duncan, appreciate your time here on Ghana tonight. First of all, it's 72 hours now, from Tuesday to now. The strike is ongoing. Now, You'll say if your shortage is imminent, if this continues beyond today, the day is almost ending. What's happening? The shortages have already uh, occurred. The good news this evening is that there seems to be some truth uh, and that maybe the strike uh, could be called off by tomorrow, maybe not. Uh, but there was a meeting today, and what I can confirm is that it's gone well uh, for on all sides. Uh, the drivers seem to be very okay with, I mean, a certain framework agreed uh, as far as their salaries or remuneration is concerned. And so it might not be something that will enter into the weekend uh, as we had initially feared. But what I can confirm is that the shortages are already uh, within the system. And so if they should decide to call off the strike tomorrow morning, uh, they will need to double their efforts to ensuring that uh, the stations that would have needed uh, to get products as far back as Tuesday that they didn't get Wednesday, they didn't get Thursday, uh, if you are coming to start working Friday, Saturday, I see. Uh, it means you may have to double uh, parts of the experience, them notwithstanding. And so certainly that's looking good. And you say that there's some some good news to look forward to from tomorrow, that these tank, fuel tanker drivers may call off their strike tomorrow because of a positive outcome of this crucial meeting earlier today. But did you ever get the indication that according to some of these tanker, fuel tanker drivers, there were some plans to engage Central Oil to release their trucks, the fuel tankers that they brought into the country to distribute fuel while these persons are on strike. Did that ever come up? Was it ever a consideration on the table? Uh, truly, I don't think we will get there uh, get to a situation where the the private refineries and the backup, like I've indicated, uh, the meeting between stakeholders uh, just this evening seemed to have concluded well, and expectations are that if the drivers will stick to uh, their own promise that tomorrow morning, uh, would hear from them. Uh, we are quite hopeful that 
the strike would probably be called off and then they could start working uh, immediately. And so you may not need to deploy plan B or plan C or plan D uh, because the over 5,000 drivers are uh, I see. And in the midst of all this, you're saying that fuel prices may go up, all things being equal, in the coming days, even though there was an earlier projection that we should expect a reduction in the price of petrol, for instance. Why is that? Well, Alfred, if you look at current, I mean, market prices, IMP, current exchange differentials vis-a-vis uh, -vis the city's uh, performance to the dollar, there is only one expected outcome. It is not likely prices will decline. It is even unlikely prices would stabilize. The next pricing window, which commences uh, the following week, is light fuel at the pumps of today. I'm seeing 15.5 Ghana City being quoted. Has changed to one dollar. If uh, the BDC just a month ago uh, owed ten million dollar and had an exposure of a uh, hundred and twenty-five million Ghana cities because it was twelve point five. Now that it moves to about fifteen point five, the same ten million dollar you would need a hundred and fifty-five. So that would mean that they would need to double up or get. Uh, some add-ons as far as uh, what they mop from you and I at the market uh, is concerned. So prices would, would go up. There can't uh, be, I mean, some magic. Unless, of course, like I've said, we can find a way to bring down the city's depreciation uh, back to maybe the 12 or the 13 or even 14. But as it sits around 15, approaching 16, uh, Alfred, I can confirm without equivocation that Ghanaians are likely to be saddled with additional uh, fuel price increments in the coming days. It's a, it's a reality check, but I uh, thank you. It's not the good the news that we want to hear, but until anything happens, this is what's going to take place. Thank you for joining us. Dan Kanamwa, Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC. Up next, the cost of imported goods will remain high as long as the local currency, I'm talking about the city, keeps depreciating. At least, this is what we do know is happening at the forest bureaus. Take a look at this. Um, we, we, we just visited a number of them. Um, quickly, let's understand what's happening at the ports with respect to the importers and exporters. And Samson Asaki Awingobit, Executive Secretary. So Awingobit, appreciate your time here on Ghana tonight. First of all, let us understand this. What's, what's going on at the ports? How is all of this impacting on you, the importers and exporters? Thank you very much. Um, quite clearly, um, one would know that uh, the current situations, the impasse between the city and the dollar in the country currently, it's not just affecting only the business, we, the business community alone, uh, but you yourself as a, as a consumer and those who are watching us from their various homes uh, within the source of Ghana. Uh, are all concerned because if you are a consumer differently, uh, we all go to the same single markets where you and I will go to purchase our goods and services. And because of the cost for the dollar, um, I think the dollar is now almost one dollar is going for fifteen cents now. Um, so it tells you that in daily basis, you go to the market and you see prices of goods being adjusted in daily basis, and that is also affecting and drilling into the Ghanaian ordinary citizens' pocket. Um, the other aspect is that for no matter how the importer will suffer to pay due to some charges and fees uh, at our port, when the goods get to the markets, uh, the rate at which the importer will have wished to sell, he cannot sell at that rate because if you want to say I, I, I have sympathy of my consumer, I have applied for my, my, my customers, so I cannot do something about the pricing and you lose the 15 cities or the 14.80. What it means is that at the end of the day, if you finish selling your stocks, then you have to cost to borrow money to add before you can go back for a trip. And so that is why you go to the market. The business person wants to reduce the price, but look at the situation at this point. He cannot. And then the worst thing they could do is to keep on increasing the prices or adjusting the prices in daily basis. 
Mm. If you make a sales of 20 shillings, you want to go and buy one dollar. If you make a sales of 100 cans, you want to go rent, rent to go and buy a dollar. If you don't do that, you say, let me finish selling of my product. And after which I can go and look for the forest to pay my supplier. By the time you finish selling, you will put your head, your hands, your two hands to your head and say, Jack, my whoop. And that is the, that's, that's what is currently happening in the business community. I know many of the business community who are telling me that Mr. Saki, I can no longer import because of the dollar issue. And government is tight lipped. Government is mute. The finance minister is mute. The, the vice president is mute. The president himself is mute. Nobody seems to be talking about to tell us what are the strategies and plans and policies the government intend to put in place to be able to curtail the situation. And that is why I said elsewhere to some of the sister stations in the country that maybe the government deliberately allowed. The city to fall floor fall. Then the government will come to the port and make, make so much revenue. Then they'll come to the IBM that look, we are making more revenue. When they are actually killing the, the Ghanaian industry and also making the Ghanaian industry also putting pressure hardship on the next homes as to speak now. So it is a worse situation. And we are we, we are dismayed. We are surprised that the government right uh, tight lips it lips and, and not making any statement about current right. dispensation. And yeah. but it is it is it is I know many companies that are winding up. I know many companies that say I will never import again. And we, I know we, many companies that say I'm relocating. We, we see all of that government. happening. And in fact, the, what you have just said is a comprehensive description of the situation. And I would want to say thank you so much. And you demand a lot more from the finance ministry. And, and I'm sure that this is one that everybody else who is impacted by this continuous depreciation of the city will be asking. Thank you. Samson Asakia Wingobit is Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Join us same time tomorrow for another conversation. My name is Alfred Okonze. Have a good night.